What's good YouTube? It's your dear boy GXA here back with another video and today we're taking a look at the, at the, the Sony A7S A7S 3 is the long-awaited successor to the A7S 2 It's one of the most anticipated cameras to come out in recent memory. The original A7S and the A7S II were pretty groundbreaking cameras in terms of video for interchangeable lens mirrorless cameras. So to say that most of us had high hopes for the A7S III would be an understatement. The camera features a 12 megapixel full frame sensor, similar to the other releases in the lineup. The A7S III comes in at $3,500. It shoots 4K 120 frames per second, 10-bit 422 XAVCS footage at 600 megabits per second. It also has the ability to shoot 16-bit RAW through the HDMI port. So this short film, if you will, more of a tone poem, mood piece, was designed to try to make something narrative that would work with using only autofocus. And I, I was honestly really surprised how it handled these situations. Obviously having a focus puller will get you better results in a narrative situation. A human knows when you want to focus. You know, the camera is just determining that based off of if there's something in the focusing area or not. So there was one shot that turned out fine when the camera is panning down from the forest canopy to the figure standing in the woods, where I would have preferred the focus racked closer and stopped to the point of the actor as it was coming down. Instead, the camera kept focusing on the distance until they intersected the focus point. So 
it's it's a very little thing. I mean, I think it, it it's fine in the shot, but to me, that's how I would have directed an AC to focus that for me. If you know the limitations and how the camera is going to act, you can find shots and scenarios that this way of the camera working will achieve the looks that you want. But you do need to kind of think about that beforehand, otherwise it'll just look like you're using autofocus, which isn't necessarily a good look. I I was really impressed in one shot in particular when the main character is bowing towards the obelisk and it's pushing towards his face. When he is going down out of frame, it's staying roughly locked on to where he was and catches him when he comes back up. Typical autofocus systems would normally just immediately latch onto the background. It would clearly not look like there's a human focusing the camera. So there was a little bit of that in this scene, but honestly, it really surprised me and really almost started to change my mind about using autofocus on a narrative situation. One really cool feature that this camera has that I don't really see a ton of people talking about, you can pretty reliably monitor this camera with a cell phone using the Image Edge mobile app. The fact that you can do that straight in the camera without having an external device to transmit and still see a decent quality image and adjust the settings and actually record is really awesome. I wish the Fuji cameras had that. That's really a useful thing, especially if you're filming yourself often. Honestly, having the app is more useful than the flip screen because you can be a lot farther away from the camera and still see what you're doing. The Sony a7S III has dual native ISO sensor, 640 and 12,800. To get the highest dynamic range on any camera, you want to be shooting at the native ISO of the sensor, which means there's two different ISO settings that will give you the optimal dynamic range. Most of the shots in the short film from earlier were shot at 12,800 on the a7S III. The dynamic range of the a7S III is really pretty good. I, I was hoping that it would be a lot better than the X-T3 and X-T4, but after doing a side-by-side -side comparison, they look like they have almost identical dynamic range. And that's still not bad because the X-T3 has really good dynamic range, but I was hoping that it would be a little bit higher than it is. That being said, you could still do incredible stuff with either camera. The roughly 13 stops of dynamic range that these have is really, really awesome. This was a music video that my best friend in the world, Xiao Xing Han, shot in China recently. I color graded this. This was all shot at 10-bit 422 at 100 megabits in the long GOP format. So it's not even using the intracodec and you can get amazing stuff. I, you know, I did do HSL qualifications, but not a whole lot. You know, I still did power windows and all that stuff all on this 100 megabit per second footage. So, you know, you really don't need to go and shoot these insanely high bit rates and use up a ton of hard drives just because you think you need it to be able to make the footage look good you don't because you can you can do a lot with with less than you think you need
12 megapixels is definitely enough for still images. And I know a lot of people might say like, oh, you, you shouldn't use this camera for stills, but I think that's ridiculous. You can get amazing looking stills out of this camera and 12 megapixels is definitely enough even to print with, uh, up to even 16 by 20. I've done an entire gallery show of images that I shot on the original A7S, and those were all printed 16 by 20, and they looked great. And, you know, I don't look at professional prints every day, so, you know, maybe if I saw the same print side by side at, on like a 50 megapixel sensor, it would be a night and day difference, but to me, it's fine. I, I think it's totally usable for shooting pictures. The original a7s is one of the smallest full-frame cameras that you can buy, period, even to this day. So to see the a7 series grow in size every single year has been a pretty big disappointment to me. I understand the reasons they do so, you know, they've added a larger battery, they've added the image stabilizer, which does take up a little bit more room, but to me, what I really loved about the original A7S series was the fact that the camera was so ridiculously small. That's a big gripe for me, actually, you know, I I'm sure many people watching my videos don't know this, but I actually have a physical disability. I cannot bend my fingers, so using a large camera is actually like physically pretty difficult for me. So it's actually kind of sad seeing these cameras get bigger again, since it was such a cool revolution of going from DSLRs down to these super small mirrorless cameras, and now they like seem to be going back the other way to being large again. So to me, it's pretty disappointing, but I mean, the camera is incredible. It's just physically hard for me to use, and I don't see a need for them to get larger. The a7S 3 is the highest end camera that most people should ever think about buying. It's perfect if you're looking to start a video production business and you don't really have the crew or the equipment to pull off more elaborate shots on your own. With the ridiculously good autofocus, you can do a lot of stuff like hanging a gimbal out of a car and doing like tracking shots of someone behind you or throwing it on a gimbal and doing kind of elaborate tracking shots of a person walking and know that the focus is going to be nailed perfectly while doing these shots and you don't need a, a camera assistant to do that. Doing like a dolly push-in shot uh, or or doing an interview by yourself where you just have the camera set up next to you and you can't really sit there and focus it yourself. But having this camera with its unbelievable autofocus that you can trust just do its thing next to you and you can focus on interviewing a person is pretty awesome and it's essentially like having an AC for certain situations all built into the camera. So it's, it's an incredible tool for very specific situations. I find it annoying that some people think they need to be shooting their YouTube videos on 8K RED camera. It's such overkill for this platform. People aren't gonna sit down and do heavy color grading on a talking head section for a YouTube video. You should be able to art direct that in such a way that you don't need to do massive color correction to it after the fact anyway. You know, you're shooting this huge high bit depth, high bit rate file format for YouTube just to compress it to hell. And you know, your viewers are seeing some super banded 8-bit footage at the end of the day. So to me, the a7S III is basically the high highest end camera that I think anybody should be using for YouTube at all. Just stop buying reds for YouTube. It's unnecessary. <laughs> Save some hard drives.